Imagine a bank, probably your bank. When you think of your bank, can you imagine what happens inside? We know everyone uses a bank so they can participate in our modern world, and we know the banks produce nothing yet are highly profitable. So how do they accomplish this task? What are bankers doing to make this possible? To bring everyone along for this ride and to find out the truth, we need to climb the five knowledge levels on general public understandings, on the inner workings of banks. The first level most people have when they are young is that the bank takes your money and secures it. If you give them physical money, they will take it and put it in a vault under lock and key, and if it is electronic, that number represents real money in the bank that they are holding in your name. This model is quickly undone when they learn that the bank makes loans. If all the money deposited is kept in cold storage, how could they make any money? The banks could lend some of the money, say half, and lend the rest. At level two, you believe that the money they see in their accounts is partially in the community around them, as loans, in the homes and the businesses, partially in a vault, and that they can always be assured that the bank will always have enough should they need to withdraw. You believe you are getting some of the profits from these loans since it is your money being lent out, and the banks pocket the difference. The third level now extends when you learn that the banks do not lend out half of what they have in reserves, but far more than that. Far more than they have. Five times. Ten times. Fifty times. A hundred times as much money as they have deposited. Under a fractional reserve system, the banks save a percentage of what they have collected as money and lend out the rest, which is then spent and stored as money, which is then deposited and loaned again, multiplying the total money supply that the government originally created. When the government prints money, an additional multiple of that money is created by the banks. This presumption is the one most educated economists currently believe, and the fact that shatters this belief is that banks do not need deposits at all to make loans, and there is no system that can contain their ability to create money at their own profit. Level 4, here's how it works. Banks create money when they make a loan, much like protons were created at the start of the universe. The bank types your money into existence on a bank account in your name, and then they create what is normally a liability, but they turn it into an asset, ownership of your debt. The issue is that this is not money and anti-money, this is just two debts, two promises to pay. The bank promises to pay you should you withdraw, and you promise to pay the bank every month with interest. As you pay this debt, your money disappears and the value of the debt shrinks, reducing the total money supply. This is not a store of value as when the government prints new bills. This money can be stored, transferred, and measured, but in the end it's always debt. Now we arrive at level 5, the final level. Bank account balances are debts from the banks to us. When we deposit money, we get an IOU and they take legal ownership of our money. When we get a loan, the banks owe us an equal amount to what we owe them, plus interest. As you spend this IOU, the promise to pay moves from you to someone new. Now the bank owes them money. When the debt is paid back, the bank's value drops and you have less money. When you withdraw your money from the bank system, less money is electronic and being spent, and all fiat is still subject to inflation, so there is no way to simply build wealth without creating debt with fiat money. Our economy now relies on a huge debt ratio, as high as 95%, where repayment would mean destroying most of what we consider money and funneling real wealth to the already wealthy. Banks are so vital to the propagation of government money that they now have more power than governments without a central bank. When banks are able to create money through double debt, they crash economies, they inflate the price of basic goods. They bury us in debt that takes us away from our lives. The main issue with our current situation is that in order to live and work in a modern world, we need banks and their bank accounts to transfer our money with cards and online. Since our money is still just numbers, we need a trusted third party to keep it all secure. The only solution we have is to use money that is electronic at its base, money that is not created or destroyed, money that is secured by the individual and needs no third parties. Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is not created by a bank or a government. It is created by storing all transactions made with that currency on everyone's devices and verifying with encryption that every transaction is valid. This system would invalidate the Proton model for the creation and destruction of money that banks use. If a bank is to make a loan with cryptocurrency, they must first get deposits to lend out. 
They can't lend out more than they have, and they can't create money with double debts. The more collateral in the loan, the safer the loan, and the less they need to charge. They also have to encourage savings, so they share more profits by offering far higher APRs to its depositors. I currently get an average of 15% per year on my money by using the crypto bank Celsius. In conclusion, our fiat money is debt that can't mathematically all be paid off, backed by the government, and banks are the biggest players in the game. Banks cause huge inflation and bubbles in many markets, like housing, and leak that inflation throughout the rest of the economy. They create money with double debts far in excess of what they could actually pay. They know as long as we stay within the banking system, they will never actually need to make good of it. Now that you know that there is an alternative to this broken banking system, you need to switch to the blockchain, where you know that your money is really there, really being stored, and really being transferred when you spend it. To make the switch easier for the less technically literate, I recommend Celsius. They make it easy to sign up on your phone within 10 minutes, and it's a change you'll be raving about like a new Tesla owner. Sign up for a Celsius bank account with the promo code 1518C. 486, all one code, and get $30 when you transfer at least $200 into a new account. As we shift our personal value to the transparent and secure blockchain, the old system will collapse under its own weight. This revolution will be quiet and surprising for those not paying attention, so you do want to do this as soon as possible. Missing out on the growth will leave you struggling when the next market crash happens, which at these home prices is any day now. If you liked this video, leave a like, and if you've enjoyed three of my videos, subscribe. And if you took action because of this video, leave a comment and stay tuned for more unconventional wisdom.